That was so beautiful, Jonas. Thank you for that prelude. And now Rita Bouchard is coming to the microphone to lead us in our call to worship. Have you ever felt alone on your spiritual journey? Perhaps you had trouble finding God in your life. Or was God very real to you and others did not understand? We gather together to celebrate the God who moves in mysterious ways, but who is always very near to our hearts, who moves in and out of our lives as powerfully and yet elusive as the wind. Whether your spiritual journey has been alone or you have been walking with us in faith, we are all in this together. Let us walk with the God who is leading us. Let us worship our Lord who will show us the way. Lord, lead 
come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, the Olympics are going on, and how exciting it is to see all the athletes compete in the various competitions and the amazing things that you have given them the strength and the power and the endurance to do is just so remarkable, feats only accomplished by a very few. And glad we are not up to that standard with you, Lord. The, we are not perfect. We, our goodness isn't decided by if we are a hundredth of a second faster than someone else or if we can beat the, the most amazing athlete in the world. You call us to follow your love, to live the love of Christ. And sometimes we make mistakes and your mercy and your forgiveness is there to help us get up again when we have fallen 
to try once more when we have failed and to continue to let your love rule within our hearts to re-energize us, remake us from within. We are so grateful. As we think of the Olympic Games in China, we also think of the fact that the Chinese are harshly oppression, oppressing the Uyghur minority and how light, hard life is for them to be treated such a way. And Lord, sometimes powerful people think that they are doing right by putting down others, by controlling every situation, when actually that control is just another form of cruelty. Help us when we are in control, when we have the say, when we are able to put down others that we don't, that we find the better path, that we lift people up instead of putting them down, that we show them how they can be somebody too, and we stand up for the injustice that others suffer. And dear Lord, in this cold weather, when we think of that there are people who are homeless, help us continue our efforts of, of helping those who are in need, of providing mittens and hats for those who are cold and jackets for those who don't have a warm covering it, and work with the Hanover Area Council of Churches in their cold weather shelter to get people out of the cold and into the warm. We pray all these things, asking that you help each of us to be your people, to know that you were with us, and to thank you for your promises. All this we pray. Amen. And now Rita Bouchard is coming to the microphone again to lead us in the first part of the prayer list. We pray for, on this Sunday, Robert Bixler, Joe Black, Denise Schilkolt, Dennis Durasoff, Chris Elliott, Jan Fry, Gloria Henry, Jane Miller, Jane Nace, Ali Neff, Deb Ort, Greg and Sandra Pewterbaugh, Jean Sterner, Mike Sterner, Phyllis Toman, Reverend Kurt and Ginny Weber, Phyllis Warner, Frank Wilson, Shirley Zambron. We pray for the family and friends of those who have gone on and are now with God. Sarah Bell Boyer, Brian K. Bortner, Dottie Bortner, Marlene Collins, Floyd Groft, Todd Mummert, Randy Leroy Nafe, Buddy Overlander, Melvin Poe, Donna Shrive, K. Trump Smith, Louise Smith, Sandy Spangler, Jackie Wirtz, Gary Reinhardt, Harold Whitmore. And now let us share together the prayer our Lord taught us as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And now for our call to offering. Our church does so much through prayers, through volunteering, but also through our offering that we can pull together our money that we can all share for the greater good. Your offerings can be mailed to Cindy Forbes at 5123 Sinshine School Road, Spring Grove, PA. Our Sunday school offerings can be sent to Neil Rohrbaugh at 800 Mengus Mills Road, Spring Grove, PA. Church envelopes and offering plates for both Sunday school and church are at the back of the sanctuary. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
gracious God, as we came into this building today and found that the heat was on and it was just so warm and comfortable, we were blessed with so much warmth. We know too in our life, as we look around us and see through the eyes of faith, we see all the blessings you give us and how truly rich and blessed we are. Accept the gifts we give back, gifts that you have given us first to share with others, that those sharings might be powerful and make such a difference in the life of your church and the needs of others and in the hope of faith for many. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. my shame rising again i bless your name you are my all in all when i fall down you pick me up when i am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all Now will the children please come forward for this morning's children's story. Come on down. Well, let's see who's here. Good morning. Who, what's your name, sir? Elijah. Good morning, Elijah. And you, miss? Maggie. Hi, Maggie. <coughs> well, this morning I want to tell you a story about a boy named Paul. One day, his mom had made some cookies. <gasps> do you like cookies? No. Uh, I do too. And you know what she said? I'm putting them in this cookie jar and you are not to touch them, therefore dessert after the meal. And why do you suppose she said that? Because you have to eat healthy to get sweet stuff later. That's right. You eat the healthy stuff first, you get the sweets as your dessert, your treat. That's right. Yes. So you know what Paul did? He snuck into the kitchen. His mother was on the other side of the house. He carefully opened up the cookie jar and he was reaching his hand in. He heard a voice from the other side of the house that said, Paul, get your hand out of the cookie jar. How'd she know? 
How did she know? Do, do moms have eyes in the back of their heads? Do they have super duper hearing? I don't know. I don't know, yeah. but they know, right? You know why? Moms listen really carefully because they care about you. For example, another time, Paul was asleep in bed at night and suddenly he woke up and he saw his mom picking up his brother who was coughing and he hadn't heard a thing, but his mom from the other side of the house in her bedroom, she heard her little, his little brother coughing and she came to, to comfort him and to give him some cough medicine. How did she hear? She listened really carefully because moms have this amazing sense of, of hearing and concern for their children because they love you. And do you know what? God listens to you just the same way. God hears what you're doing and cares about you. And if you say to God, Lord, I need your help, or God, I'm feeling alone, or, or how do I figure this out? God's going to listen to you. Did you know that? Yeah. So remember that. Remember, just as your mom can hear with that x-ray hearing, she can seem to hear through walls. God knows what's going on and cares about you. Okay. Thank you so much. See you next week. Our first scripture today is from Psalm 19, one through six. How clearly the sky reveals God's glory. How plainly it shows what he has done. Each day announces it to the following day. Each night repeats it to the next. No speech or words are used. No sound is heard, yet their message goes out to all the world and is heard to the ends of the earth. God made a home in the sky for the sun. It comes out in the morning like a happy bridegroom, like an athlete eager to run a race. It starts at one end of the sky and goes across to the other. Nothing can hide from its heat. Our second scripture is from Hebrews 11, verse 1. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. This is the end of the scriptures for today. It can be amazing what God does for people, the, the power that God has to make a difference. Rita and I have a, a good friend who was very, very ill. She had fourth stage cancer. No one thought she was going to live. And on one Christmas day, she was so violently sick. The woman just suffered so much and we felt so badly for her. But her friends prayed for her. And one day, suddenly she started to feel better. And she had a sense she was going to be all right. And not only did she have a sense of it, she was, and our friend at 71 years old is not only feeling better, she's back to work and doing what she always did, not because she has to, but because she likes her job. Isn't that amazing? Another friend had a stroke and her symptoms were not good. She could hardly move her arms. She could hardly speak. And it was so difficult to see her so disabled and what was amazing is after a number of months, when the doctors had given up on her recovering, suddenly she was better. And her friends at church prayed for her. And one day her brother said to the doctor, well, you know, her friends at church were praying for her. And the doctor said, well, they must have had very powerful prayers then because she did an amazing recovery. I'm sure you've known people were just so contrary and difficult and nasty and they got faith and suddenly they changed in an amazing way or, or people who were struggling and trying to find their way in life and God helped them. And it's amazing the evidence that God gives us that God is real and alive. But sometimes we say to ourselves, we have doubts. Can we believe that? It just seems too good to be true. And the fact is there's sometimes we pray for people and they don't get better. 
And sometimes we pray that some will, will be turned to be a nicer person and they're their usually nasty self. And sometimes we pray for answers and they don't come. So, so we can often be people who have faith and with our own eyes, we see the amazing things that God have done, but we have our doubts. Well, if you've ever felt that way, there was a man by the name of Nicodemus who also had his doubts. Nicodemus was actually a very religious man, a man who was part of the Pharisees, which meant set apart because they followed the law so strictly of God. And we read that Nicodemus decided to come to Jesus by night. Now, that, that was a giveaway in ancient times because, you know, nowadays you go outside if you live in a neighborhood or near a city and the whole sky is lighted by the reflected light of thousands, tens of thousands of electric bulbs in the city. They're just keeping the sky illuminated. But in ancient times at night, it was very dark. How dark, you say? If there wasn't a moon out and there was a cloud cover, you might not be able to see a hand in front of you. And so often if people wanted to do something that they weren't supposed to be doing, it was illegal or immoral, or they were embarrassed about who they were gonna talk to, they did it in the dead of night when no one could see them. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus late at night. It's, it's a clue. But he says to Jesus, we know that you are a teacher sent by God because no one could perform the miracles you were doing if God were not with him. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can a grown man be born again? Nicodemus asked. He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I'm telling you the truth, replied Jesus that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and the spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but is born spiritually of God, of the spirit. Do not be surprised that I tell you that you have to be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. It's like that with everyone who's born of the spirit. How can that be, asked Nicodemus. Jesus answered, you are a great teacher in Israel. You don't know this? I'm telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we've seen with our own eyes, yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You don't not believe me when I tell you of the things of this world. How can you believe me when I tell you of the things of heaven? That's an interesting passage. Nicodemus is having his doubts. On the one hand, he sees all Jesus has done and he's amazed at the wonders and miracles he's able to perform. On the other hand, uh, I don't know, I have my doubts. Jesus didn't look like a religious man. He looked like a peasant, he was a carpenter. He didn't come from any special family of priests or prophets. So he fall, probably figured, well, why should I take him seriously? And he didn't even come from any special place like Jerusalem. He came from a backwater up in the sticks of Galilee called Nazareth. So what is he to think? Sometimes we too are embarrassed by Jesus. Now, you may have a great faith. You may believe that God is with you, but do we talk to our friends and family about our faith very much? Oh no, no, they're not gonna to wanna to hear me or they're gonna think me a religious fanatic or something, but. You know, sometimes when you speak of your faith, when you verbalize it, when you articulate it, when you get the words out there, it helps not only your faith, but theirs. Now, no one's going to want to hear you beating them up because they don't have the right religion. But what people do want to hear is of your faith experience and those of others. If you talk to people about the things that God has done for you, and how grateful you are and how God has changed your life or healed you of an illness or, or been th with you through difficult times, people are gonna wanna hear that because they wanna hear about how God is really alive in the world because they do wanna believe most of the time. 
but often what we want to present to people is something right before their eyes, a trick, a great wonder in which they can't doubt. You may remember many years ago, there was a movie called Oh God with George Burns, remember, who was close to 100 at the time, who played the part of God. And he was telling this young man that he has to be his prophet. He has to go out and talk about faith and to believe. And everybody thinks the guy's crazy. And there comes a point where the young man is put on trial. And George Burns, again, the figure of God, appears in the courtroom. And he does these tricks to prove that he's God. He turns day into night and night into day right before their eyes. He, he says things that only he could know and no one else could, secrets about people. And he convinces them because right before their eyes, God is showing them that God is really real. And we want that. We really would like to see that. But sometimes that's not what God shows us. Remember what God, what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He says, the wind blows where it will. You hear it sound, you hear it rustling the leaves of the trees, you see it blowing them over, but you don't know where it came from or where it's going. It's the same way of someone born of the spirit. You don't see where the spirit comes from. You can't control it. It doesn't mean it's not real. We have to be able to see with the eyes of faith. Jesus says that no one not being born from above can see the things of God, can see the things of heaven. We need to be able to be able to see through the eyes of faith. And when we do, we do see God there. We do see God working in our lives. We need to trust. But a lot of times what we do is we hold back like Nicodemus. We stay at a safe distance and we say, well, maybe I'll have faith today. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll doubt. Maybe I'll believe. We want to be convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt. Now, that doesn't work out very well. Suppose there's a young man and there's this really nice young lady in his class in high school and he, he wants to go out with her and she's beautiful and she's kind and she's nice to him and she even seems interested, but I don't know, he's, he's being careful because he's not sure if she's really as nice as he thinks and she's not sure that she really likes him and he, he doesn't want to take a risk and, and have, ask her out and then have her shut him down completely and he's going to feel foolish and all that. So how far is all that doubt going to go in building a relationship unless he takes a risk? We need to take the risk of faith. We need to dare to believe in God. But what really gets us sometimes is the fact that the world isn't always a kind place. Sometimes people get over illnesses when we pray for them. Other times they don't. Sometimes people turn nice when we pray for them. Sometimes they stay nasty. And there's so much cruelty and injustice in the world. We, we sometimes say to ourselves, if God is real and alive, how can I believe in God when there's a world like that? The other question you can ask yourself is, how can I not believe in God when there is a world like that? I mean, in such a difficult world, we certainly need God more than in any other place. The world we face isn't a make-believe world. It isn't a fairy tale. It's a world that nailed Jesus to the cross. It's a terrible place at times. But yet, isn't that when we need God more? Not when the world is shouting to us all the time that everything is so lovely and perfect that, of course, there's a God. No, it's, it's when life isn't going well that we need God the most. So we all have to make up our mind, don't we? We're going to stay back and play it safe and not have any faith and not believe and stay miserable. Or are we going to trust in God and see the blessings that we get every day? and see how much God loves us, and know that God has hope for our future every day in the present and on to eternal life. I vote we stay happy and uh, trust in God. It's not only a wonderful thing to do, it is such a blessing. And now Rita has some prayers for us. Prayer list part two.
verbalizing our prayer list and praying for people is an outward sign that we do as individuals, followers of Christ and as a church, it's a sign of our faith that God can change these people. The list for Sunday, February 6th, excuse me, I have the wrong page, is it's Sunday, January 30th, I'm sorry, is Saran Boring, Joan Grosscott, Tony Heiss, Laurie Miller, Shirley Miller, Mary Lou and Donald Meckley, Paige Krill and family, Baby Riley, Gary Warball, Shirley Russell, Jackie Tillman. And we give thanks for the birth of Elliot Cole Strasbaugh, born to Zach and Ashley Strasbaugh. Uh, Elliot is the gr great grandson of Sandy Spangler and the grand nephew of Linda Spangler. For Sunday, January 23rd, we pray for Gail Ambrosius, Cindy Breeden, Kevin Crum, Donna Durick, Casey Egan and family, Stephen Forbes, Todd Gladfelter, Michael Hershey, Cordelia Kepler, Willis Miller, Pat Palmer, Zane Smith, Kathy Trimmer, Zachary Worley, and Cecilia Williams. For Sunday, January 16th, Angela Cox, Regine Crone, Steve Forbes, Lester Heckler, Chip Hoover, Ray Lephart, Richard Lookenbaugh, Dorothy Nagash, Kaylee Noble, Andy Potts, Nancy and Free, Frank Reed, Dean Robo, Joel Solomon, Reverend Charles Strasbaugh, Matt Strevick, Evan Taylor, Jason Toman, Tim Toman, Dorothy Trump, Reverend Leonard Warner, and Shirley Zumbrum. And those we keep in our continued prayers, Robert Einstein, Gary Clapper, Dennis Fawzi, Todd Gladfelter, Sidney Helmers, Joan Hensel, Dr. Ma Mark Hirsch, Dolores Jones, Warren Lockman, James Miller, Lisa Myers, Bob Odstadt, George Rankin Sr., Ma Schmidt, Beverly Spate Mohammed, Kathy Rawball, Sharon Schuler, Summer Storm, Sherry and Kenyon Taylor, Reverend David Stewart, Richard Brett Wilkinson, Kim Wilson, workers exposed to COVID. And also we keep in our continued prayers, all of us here today in church, all of us listening on our phones and all of us on Zoom. We are all in our continued prayers. Brother, in his hands, he's got you and me, sir. So. 
sister in his hands he's got you and me brother in his hands he's got the whole world 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 in his hands he's got the whole world. Now for our benediction. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your heart to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, to everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus forgave my sin, Jesus filled me with love. Now as we leave today, let us share Jesus' love. We are the light of the world, we are the salt of the earth. We are God's messengers of love. God's love is strong and courageous, filled with I have just a couple of announcements. Radio station WHVR and Rocky 98.5 will be promoting the Changing Life Shelters by doing an on-air broadcast that was starting last uh, Monday, the 31st, and it's running for two weeks. So if you want to contribute, that does do help the that does help the Changing Life Shelter Council of Churches. The flowers that are on the altar near the communion table are uh, given to the glory of God and in honor of Linda Bob's family who have passed by Linda Bob. Thank you, Linda. And the flowers in front here are uh, were from yesterday's uh, funeral of Sandy Spangler. We thank the family for leaving them here. And uh, Phyllis Toman is going to turn 90 on February 10th. And her family would like to do a card shower for her to celebrate the big day. She is in room 511 at Spirit Trust Lutheran, the village at Woods Terrace. That's 2100 Woods Terrace, Hanover, PA. And uh, Sue Barnhart reminds us that we need 40 people to write prayers for the Lenten season. Those are usually on our bulletin and they'll be in the email newsletter plus up on the screen when that comes along in Lent. And uh, so if you get those to Linda, there's all kinds of ways that you can get them there. If you do get the email prayer list, there's all kinds of links you can use to do it online, or you can send it to her address, or if you bump into her church, she'll, she'll take them, right? So she'll take them, yes, yes. And birthdays coming up this week, Charles W. Whitmer, Levi G. Straussbaugh, Hannah F. Golden, Cynthia Breeden, Stephen B. Henry, Carly A. Miller, Phyllis J. Toman, uh, Jeffrey A. Trump, and Michael L. Shu. Thank you so much for being here. You are not uh, warm weather friends. You are here even in the cold. And thank you so much. God bless all of you at home as well. See you next week. May God keep you in God's care. Mm -hmm.